Almost four years ago, I got into astrophotography, and what got me there was this move, shoot, move. It's a really basic travel mount that is ideal for wide angle astrophotography, and it really helped me out uh, when I was first getting started. But as I was using this, even on the first couple of trips, I was getting very frustrated with its inconsistency. Um, sometimes I would get five minutes, sometimes I could barely get 30 seconds, and I couldn't understand why even on the same polar alignment, on the same night, it would just not behave the way you'd think it would. The first trip that I had this on, I was getting probably, I don't know, 50% keep rate on five minute exposures on that same lens on my full frame camera. But then I kept running into issues where try to unscrew itself. Um, even with the, the Loctite, um, for the main plate itself, it was still, if I wasn't paying enough attention, I could sometimes almost lose my camera because it would just swing. The weight of the camera would cause the tripod to fall over and it could be a very bad situation. So for example, on my one of my last trips, when I went down to Samoa, I was hoping to catch the core of the Milky Way with my wide angle lens and get a bunch of really amazing photos. And the first night, I couldn't even get 30 seconds consistently. It was even at 30 seconds, I was still getting trailing intermittently and it was driving me nuts. And then it would sometimes work great for a few minutes. I had to get perfect. And then for the next five minutes, it would just be miserable and awful and just wasted time. And then I'd get a couple of good exposures and then I'd get a couple more bad exposures. And I couldn't figure out why it was just performing so inconsistently. I got my my 50 millimeter lens out and it was definitely not happy about that the first night. So then the second night, because the target I was shooting was small enough, it didn't matter the orientation of the camera, I just screwed it straight to the V-plate and I said, forget this, I'm going to, I'm going to do what I can to get as much data that I can use as possible. So that second night I managed to collect, I think it was 60 some odd, two minute frames on the large Magellanic cloud. And it was mostly usable, but still not what I should be getting or what even other people have been getting out of this mount. This mount has been a bane of inconsistency to say the least. And I never figured out exactly what's causing it. I could leave it tracking all night. And I will get a series of five minute shots that are great. Then I'll get one or two that are absolutely awful. Then I'll get one that's great, completely random on when it wants to be good and when it wants to be bad. So then over Thanksgiving weekend, I was just looking around. I was looking at some of the accessories. Um, I was trying to find a uh, star focus filter. Um, I knew that Move Shoot Move had come out with one and so I was browsing around and then sure enough they also had a, a new tracker and this new tracker had a lot of innovative changes that helped a lot of the consistency issues I was having. One of those innovations was this geared ring where the plate attaches to the main rotational axis. It screws on and it's got teeth. So when you look at the other side, it's also got teeth. So that will keep this from rotating. So once you've got this secured, it won't move. You tighten it down and you are good to go. It is, it is sturdy and it's not going anywhere on its own. I will not lose a camera or a lens because this decided to fall over because the weight had shifted and it unscrewed itself. I even took it out the first night I got it. It was clear enough. And I just set my camera on there, set it for five minute exposures and just let it go. And it came out okay. I didn't have as many as I was hoping for that were keepers. Um, 
but it came out much more consistently than my move shoot move was coming out. So this Nomad is definitely, definitely been an upgrade for me. The other big difference um, was how the polar alignment laser mounts to the, the unit. So instead of previously, it would just clip on to the side and it would just and you just kind of snap it onto the sides, you know, whichever side you needed it to, to be on to actually get pointed at Polaris. So that was great, but then that meant that this laser had to be very well aligned in its own housing so where you weren't pointing in a different place if you changed the angle of the mount. However, with the Nomad, they solved that problem and they put a little threaded connector that you can put on the end of the laser that threads into the mount that will point straight through the mount. And you don't have to worry about your laser not necessarily pointing straight with the mount because now it is forced to flush with the mount. With the Nomad's new laser, it was a lot simpler to do. So you just kind of, you turn it on and then you would roll across the flat surface, as you can see, and you would watch to see how, where it, where the high spot was. So in this case, let me move that and get that out of the way. You can see it stays pretty consistent all the way across that line. And so anytime that was a high spot, you'd see if it was lining up with your your set screws, and then you'd adjust it from there. So as far as calibrating the lasers, now the newer versions of the move, move did have a calibratable laser where it had the pins, and you can see it on this one. It's got some little bitty set pins that you can control a little bit of the calibration. Um, you can you know, push them in, it'll adjust the laser a little bit in each direction. And so, um, but the newer versions of the Move Shoot Move did have that, so aligning the laser in the mount wasn't as big of a deal. In terms of size, they both are about the same thickness. The Nomad is a little bit thicker than the Move Shoot Move, but it is also not as wide and as you can tell it's definitely not as tall so they definitely they made it a little bit more compact when they made the new one which is nice it makes it a little more travelable now granted it is a little taller um, especially once you get everything on here i haven't been able to take this on any trips yet i've only had it for barely over a month so i'll let you know later depending on how that goes the other big difference with the Nomad versus the Move Shoot Move is your tracking options. The Move Shoot Move has plenty of tracking options. You have north, south, half speed, but the, the Nomad has specifically north and south, so on or off. It's either moving at star speed for the north hemisphere or it's going the other direction for the southern hemisphere. You don't have those types of options. Now, that will limit me when I'm trying to do time lapses, because um, I really enjoyed the move shoot moves half speed for when doing time lapses, because then I wasn't stuck with the same spot of the sky the whole time as the Milky Way would go. I could actually watch the Milky Way cross the screen with half speed, but at full speed, the Milky Way will move in the same part of the frame the whole time. So it's, I haven't decided if I want to keep my move shoot move just for the half speed time lapses. So the main reason why I even ended up on move shoot moves website that day was because I was looking at the star focus filter. And I don't know how much you can see through this, but there's a bunch of little lines on this filter. And that will create a certain pattern across the bright stars so you can tell when it's actually aligned. So 
one of the issues I was having with my wider fields, um, even even my telephoto lens at 100 with my bad enough mask that I had. It's a, a small telescope's bad enough mask, so it's not intended for wider field. Um, with Even with this mask, and with my, my telephoto all the way back to 100, even at 200, I was struggling a little bit, except for like really, really, really bright stars. Um, but even down to 100 bright stars, this was not really cutting it. So then when I would go to do some wide angle stuff, the best I could do was just zoom all the way in on the brightest star and try to adjust the focus to make that star as small as possible. But there's a lot of play there. Sometimes you're just off and you don't quite know it. Your stars are going to be just a little bloated. And that can make a difference um, in the end image that you're trying to put together. So with this one, it's an 82 mil filter. It'll fit my 82 mil filter on my wide angle lens on my 16. My telephoto is a 77 mil filter. Well, I've got plenty of step rings for that. The only problem with the telephoto is I generally have the lens hood on it. That lens hood is a little bigger than this 80 mm filter. So I'm still working on a way that I can put this into something or attach it in something um, that I can sit it on the end of the lens hood. So while I'm doing astrophotography in the middle of the night, I don't have to keep taking the lens hood on and off every time I want to check focus. That gets very annoying, very redundant. So I would rather just have something I can, like with this one, I just set this right in the end of the, the lens hood. And it holds it just fine. And I usually do my focus and I just pop it right off and then I keep imaging. So once I find a way to float this at the front of the lens hood, I will be probably very happy. So the first real opportunity I had to put the Nomad to use was right after I got it, happened to be the Gemini meteor shower. So I took the Nomad, I took my tripod, and I took my 14 millimeter lens on my full frame camera. And I went out to my cousin's house just outside of town where it's the darkest place that I have quick access to. They're 15 minutes away, I think. And I set my camera to take 30 second pictures for four hours. I came back later to pick up the camera. The Nomad was still going four hours later in the really cold. I think uh, the camera was starting to frost over a little bit. I had uh, a heat pack on the lens, so I didn't have anything on the lens itself. It did pretty well. It held up. Um, it did drift a little bit over the course of four hours, so stacking those images uh, did did have some trouble with some stars on the edge of the field because it was the 14 millimeter lens at 2.8. Definitely isn't very forgiving on the edge of that star field, that's for sure. But I mean, it held up pretty well. It was still going. I still don't know how long it will run for. I know the move shoot move was supposed to be about five hours. And I know that I had had it running before for at least six or more. Um, though half of those times was on half speed, so that may have contributed to the longer battery life. But so far, I mean, after, you know, a test in my backyard just for consistency and then taking out to the cousins for the meteor shower, I'm, I think, much more happy with the performance of the Nomad as compared to the performance I have been getting out of the Move, Shoot, Move. So I'm looking forward to later this spring when I can get this out hopefully get to some darker areas and try to get some better Milky Way pictures than what I've currently got from the Move Shoot Move. If you're trying to figure out how to get into even wide angle or Milky Way photography, definitely a good option um, to learn with and to kind of get your feet wet as you figure out what your next steps are and then maybe even progress to some higher end tracking mounts and telephoto lenses or telescopes and just start going down the rabbit hole that way. But yes, I would, I'd go check them out. See, uh, see if this is something that you would be interested in. And at the very least, if you already have, um, equipment 
and trackers and all that stuff going, I'd recommend just checking out the, uh, the star focus filter. It does a pretty good job. Even at 16 millimeters, I can still see the diffraction pattern on the brighter stars, which is way better than what I used to get just trying to manually focus it myself. So go check them out and keep looking up and enjoy that night sky. Thanks for watching.